today we are going to check the special terminal trailer, which is called the Ruru trailer. It has two types. One is with gooseneck, another one is without the gooseneck, working with the hook. Here we have uh, listed uh, all the things we are going to see. First, we are going to see what uh, the product looks like. The product is uh, looks like this. This is this one is has no fixed gooseneck. This one is with the fixed gooseneck. Here is how it looks from the rear part. Usually. Each terminal would usually have a low bed like this, but sometimes they have a special requirement, not only for containers, but for other huge cargoes. So out of that, they have a special requirement, and later they developed a, a trailer, such like a platform with a ruling system, but without a gooseneck. Here are some pictures of it. This is a Ruru trailer without a gooseneck. This is the pocket for the retouchable hook to tool it. This is how it looks like with the container on top of it. This is quite long. It is about 53 feet. And we have built the many of them a few years ago. And this is how it looks like with container on top of it. When we get to the bottom, we can see the cross member is pretty huge and we also have a, a longitude uh, supporting member to give the strength of the frame. This is a real. Here it is in our workshop. This is after our workshop, and this is uh, the pocket. This is how it looks like in the pocket. You know, we need it to give the strength to make sure the hawk could to it uh, move. This is uh, how it looks in the front. You can see it uh, has uh, the twist lock in the top and the roof ring in the front and also in the side. This is uh, how it looks like uh, from the side view. Here is the wheels. This is the roof bar we welded on the bottom of the flange. This is how it looks like uh, from the far view. It looks like uh, almost a platform. And this is a special type of the container locks. It is special. We usually do the fixed one or the bar. We can show you later. This type of uh, container locks could be retracted to the bottom of the surface. So it won't be damaged by the containers. Here is uh, another view. You can see it more clear. This is how it looks like at the bottom. So you can see the frame has been well supported and well designed it. In this view, you can see the wheels. The wheels has been positioned at the rear part and it is very, very low to the ground. It is just a, not over than one meter. So you can load a lot of different cargoes. We have a different uh, floor type. You can see this uh, floor, we use uh, wood, we use timber at the deck. This picture would show you well. We use the timber on the surface. So the client usually required steel deck or the wood deck. We also call it a wood floor or the steel floor. You can see this one is the steel checked floor on the top. You can see from the bottom, the white one is using the timber floor. This is also the pocket for the hook. 
this is how it looks like at the bottom. Here is a picture which shows the clear view of the suspension, how the wheels are connecting with the suspension. This is a suspension hanger to connect with the frame, and the red color oil thing you are seeing is uh, the grease, greasener oil, greasing oil. Also, you can see many different types of other same thing in the different terminals. It has uh, different looks, but the use, the operation target is same. They're using to carry the different uh, purpose of the cargo, which I'm going to show you next. Here you can see in the terminal, different terminal would use it to carry different cargoes. This is empty. Now the client is using this type of the rotular carrying the generators. In this picture, you can see it is carrying a huge, gigantic part for a big machinery. Of course, they can use this type of the trailer to carry the containers for sure. This is another view they are carrying containers. Here is a view they are carrying the machinery on the top. You can see they built a special part to make sure it would load loaded on it. This is how they are using this part. First, they put to the bottom of the trailer, and then they put the, they drive the machinery on, and then they put the part back to the front. This is how they unload it. It's like a ramp. This is how they are operating the containers from the terminal yard to their trailers. Generators again. And this is another huge part, huge uh, machinery uh, for the airport. This is another huge part to parking in the parking in the yard. Some of our clients used it to carry the two stock of the containers, but that's quite dangerous. We want to uh, we want to recommend to do that. Okay, so to connect with them together, you need a hook. This is how we are testing the trailer. When we don't build a hook for our client, we would use a forklift and a jack to test if it is moving very well. We have other videos to show you. Like this video, you can see, Client is uh, using a removable hook by a hydraulic fifth wheel tractor. To do the lifting. So when the hydraulic fifth wheel lift up, you can see the trailer is a lift up too. This is uh, how we are testing in our factory with a gooseneck. So we use the gooseneck to tow the trailer around in our factory yard and to test if it is turning well and uh, working well. I would damage the video file there. Okay, when you are not using this type of gooseneck, you usually have a stand to place it. 
this is how it looks inside the stand and this is another view so you have this type of uh, gears for the removable hook and you also have a forklift pocket here to make sure the forklift can transport those hawks from the area A to the area B and those uh, as you can see those are the pictures we have uh, taken when we shipped them to the Cuba market here is a view when it uh, touched it with the tractor and here is more pictures of the of the gooseneck and this is uh, the testing picture we are testing if uh, it is working well and our inspector are inspecting and mirroring and this is how it looks like in the other client's yard this is another stand we are building for the changing terminal they are putting these uh, hooks there just in, pur in purpose they are not using it and put it there this is uh, the stand the Kenya client sent to us they build the stand by themselves so it still works okay uh, these are the details for the hooks so back to the running gear system the running gear system is the most important uh, system for this type of trailer. The running gear and the suspension is quite different than the other trailers. You can see it's totally rocked arm beam built by the steel for sure. This is the wheel itself. We build those wheels from the rubber to the rim and to the axle. Here is the rim we are building it and putting the greasing inside and then we put the rim inside to the tire and then we put the tire and the rim to the axle with the bear uh, inside of it then it becomes the one uh, one axle with two tires this is how it uh, looks like uh, when we finish the building uh, of the bearing and then we install it uh, to our trailers at the bottom out of that we have uh, some spare parts like this we purchase from the market then weld it on after assembling we usually put the red color greasing oil to make sure it is uh, greased well because the grease oil you need to check it uh, very carefully you need to maintain the trailer every half years because if you don't mention it, it will bring you huge damage for the axle. You need to change it. We also have the pocket in the middle of the trailer sometime if our client requires. You can see it see, for the empty left only. So when the trailer is empty, you can use the forklift to lift it. Here is a picture showing before we are assembling the rubber tire to the rim. We put the oil and then we clean it after we clean it uh, quite well then we mount it to the rim before we mount it to the rim we usually do another oil inside to make sure it is uh, smooth enough then we put the rim in this is how we do it and then we need a machine need a hydraulic machine to push it carefully and then we have it this is uh, how it uh, looks like uh, of the axle of the suspension between we mount the axle in this is uh, a pin to mount uh, with the axle together this is how it looks like uh, the pin to go into the axle before and we have the cooper busher inside of the axle here is the suspension picture and here is the uh, axle picture here is the uh, rim picture here is the uh, tire picture so then we would have uh, 
the axle and the suspension mounted on together. After that, we would use those type of uh, spare parts to do the uh, to weld it on the different uh, position, as we have agreed with our client. Here is another different type of the wheels we are building. If necessary, we uh, we are using this type of the axle. You can see it's a little bit similar but different. So we have options. These are the spare parts. Remember, we are talking about the maintenance. If you don't do the maintenance well, your trailer might having this type of huge problem. If you have no spare parts and it would cost you a lot, the trailer is going to be broken and stuck in your yard. You won't be able to use it. So please grease your trailer well, then this kind of problem won't happen. Here are some more pictures what we have built it. It's, uh, this is the, the suspension we, before we mounted any suspension hanger on it. This is a wood floor roll trailer, and this is the front of the roll trailer. Some kind of client uh, requires a stand like this at the bottom of the trailer. We, also, we can also do it for them. Most of the clients want to require the landing gear like this. Because uh, they have a hydraulic uh, fifth wheel and this uh, landing gear could have worked well. The usually client won't require this type of the this type of the uh, legs. If they have the legs like this, they would have a longer the lifting distance from the ground. So their tractor would have a higher uh, quality. So that's only for the special client. This is a picture to show the forklift. The forklift pocket is uh, from one side to another. And also the two forklifts between each other will usually at least need a 10 ton forklift to do that uh, job. Here is a picture you can see from the bottom and to see the wheels and touch the ground. It's not uh, lifting to the ground. This is the fixed uh, gooseneck kingpin part. Here is the picture you can see the welding quality and we are checking it quite uh, carefully. And this is another trailer picture. This is another trailer picture. Build those on. Okay. So how we transport it from uh, China to the other countries? We do this way. First, if the trailer is heavy, we attach the two units of them together as one package, and then transport it to the terminals then use it to transport to the destination. If uh, the trailer is um, light enough, we usually do the three units attaching, to get, attaching together. So you can attach the three units as one package as long as it's not over 10 ton. So then transport it to our client. This is how we are building it uh, in our workshop. We, we need to flip it over and then mount uh, the wheels. And if you need to do the maintenance, you need also to flip it over and then to check the quality. That's uh, before we mount the wheels and timbers on it. This is our employee is mounting the wheels on top of it. This is how we are checking the quality of the trailer. 
first uh, we need to check the material we're using. If uh, the material is like this, we need to be careful. And then we need to check the painting quality and uh, wood floor uh, mounting quality, clean the garbage, and also we need to check the decor quality. Also the paint quality we need to check if uh, it is uh, such like this. And also the paint if uh, it is uh, to the timber, we need to clean it before we, we do any transportation. And that's uh, how we do it in our workshop before we deliver to you. Okay. Um, oh, there's another thing. You need to design the trailer very carefully. Here is an example. If you are using a fixed gooseneck trailer, and the fixed gooseneck trailer, you need to consider the turning position, which is the position from the kingpin to the end of the gooseneck here. If you are not thinking about this, you might have some problem. It would uh, have uh, some uh, scratch when you are turning. So if you have uh, giving them longer enough, long enough, so you can turn it very easy and won't have a problem such as the picture shows. Okay, I think uh, that would be all for today. And I hope uh, you all enjoy the video today and uh, see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye.